that happened last night? <laughs> please Greatness stop, happened please last stop night. jiggling. Please I stop refuse. jiggling. Now I'm going to jiggle even more. Oh, I'm going to jiggle even more. This is a victory jiggle. Uh, this is a you like that jiggle. So this is a like, whatever, just be glad I'm not shirtless like Schefter. <laughs> right. This is always going to be a tough Just be glad I'm one. not shirtless like <laughs> Schefter. Yeah, but he wasn't wearing a hat. He didn't have the whole costume. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. All right, welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry. Not jiggling yet. I'm Jay yes. Croucher. This the is day Lawrence is young. Jackson. At Lord Don't Lose. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. What a ridiculous show. What a ridiculous costume. You know how many messages I got about that? More, many, I think, how, than the entire how many history of the show to date. Really? Yeah. Well, why, I appreciate all your friends why watching. Is, why is he jiggling? For instance, was wait, because because we won because yeah. it was a victory jiggle. It was a victory jiggle. Should have yeah. went shirtless. Yeah. I, no, uh, no. I've You've never seen call. me shirtless, Lawrence. <laughs> no, I should not. My wife, look, my wife is contractually obligated to look at it, but no one else true. should have to. True, true, true. Obligated. Right. I won't argue. I won't no. argue that. Yeah. No, what? I did. I did America a favor yesterday. Make make no mistake. I did America a favor. There's a reason why yeah. I wear baggy, untucked shirts. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. We got Lawrence they say Jackson. dad bods are in, but they haven't seen mine. No, no, they're not in. No. Lawrence Jackson here wearing an L.A. Dodgers cap to go with his uh, Atlanta Braves cap the week before. Uh, oh, he kind of you're all go as I do. you got to yeah. star me out, dog. Yeah. Come on, they, uh, Name yeah, three they... baseball players for the Dodgers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike Piazza. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's, uh, he's one of them. Yeah, Daryl Strawberry. Sure, sure, sure. Uh... I like that your reference is all former Mets who <laughs> played for the Dodgers later in their career. Yeah, that's weird, ain't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give me. Uh, yeah, you want Sean Ma Green Ma as Ma well? Ma 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 Machado. Is that his name? Manny yeah. Machado. He, he yeah. current, right? Yeah. We'll there you go. Tomorrow night, if he wins NL MVP. All right. Yeah, you go. Good you job. change your teams there like you I go. do. Let's there go straight go. to some Roto just, World Just so you know, if your baseball team and Lawrence reps, reps you, just don't get all excited about it. All right. Nice, Lawrence. Let's jump into Roto World headlines. Let's start off with uh, one of the mainstays on this podcast, which is Khalil Herbert, who we always love to talk about. He lands on IR. Matthew, does this make David Montgomery a must start against Lawrence's Atlanta Falcons this Sunday? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, I think there's no question about it. You were probably already starting him anyway, but I have been, I'm at running back 12, and candidly, I might be too low on him, right? And so uh, you think about weeks three and four. Those were weeks when David Montgomery was out, right? So, I mean, these two guys have split – the running back workload right. for the Bears. So weeks three and four when Montgomery was out, Khalil Herbert saw 42 touches in those two games, 71% of the running back carries during that stretch, over 20 carries in each game. And now Khalil Herbert is out, and we expect an even heavier workload for David Montgomery over the last four weeks. Bears averaging 25.8, almost 26 running back carries a game over the last four weeks. So for as great as Justin Fields has been, as you see it there on your screen, in terms of the amount of rushing attempts he's had over the last four games, each of the Bears, Montgomery with 53, Herbert with 45. So now there are 45 rushing attempts over the last four games. So you're talking about, you know, 12 a game or so that are up for grabs and maybe a few of them go to Justin Fields, but the expectation here is that the majority of them go to David Montgomery. And so, Playing the Atlanta Falcons, your Atlanta Falcons, Lawrence. Literally. Can your, Falcons. can your Atlanta Falcons stop the run? I don't believe they can. No, they're not going to stop the run. They're not going to stop David Montgomery. We saw what Deontay Foreman has done to them two of the past three weeks. Obviously, Austin Eckler had a good day against them as well. And like you mentioned, those touches that Khalil Herbert, when, that he got when Montgomery was out, Montgomery's going to get that. And if you're worried about Tristan Ebner, right, don't. He had seven <laughs> and eight touches in weeks three and four. So they'll sprinkle him in there for, for David Montgomery to get a breather. But that's about it. He's getting ready to go off, and I might have him ranked too low, too. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm at 12, but like, yeah, he's, that he, might be a little low. He's not the most exciting name, not a man who makes you want to jiggle. David Montgomery, D. No. as I believe they call him. But, but I will say, right, I mean, like, you know, David Montgomery's nickname is Monty, Uncle, Uncle Monty. And it's his nickname because I've just made that up right now. And <laughs> you know, like, like what I was Mont? wearing yesterday looked a little Uncle Monty-ish. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's a fair call. Yeah. That's the best thing you've said so far today. Fair enough. Let's talk about the best fantasy quarterback 
in the NFL over the past five weeks or so. Justin Fields, who is number one on your rankings, Matthew Berry, ahead of uh, just some lesser known names like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Al Ryder dies, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson. It hurts me that you put Jalen Hurts in front of Lamar Jackson, but Justin Fields is number one. Uh, explain that. How, are you seriously asking me to explain that? I, I mean, Justin Fields, okay, 39.3 fantasy points against Detroit, 42.7 against Miami, 26 fantasy points against Dallas, 23 against New England, and now he's at Atlanta? Atlanta, no team in the NFL over the last four weeks, no team in the NFL has given up more passing yards per game than the Atlanta Falcons. They're also a bottom 10 run defense over the last four games. The over-under in this game is the highest on the week 11 slate. And so I don't, the, the question isn't why do I have Justin Fields at number one? The question is why doesn't everybody else? I don't under, like what do, more does this guy got to do? I, I, I mean, like I get it with Mahomes, but Mahomes playing the Chargers. Chargers have seventh best pass defense over the last four weeks. Josh Allen has struggled a little bit. Like both those guys are great. Those are my two and three. But Justin Fields between the rushing and the, between the rushing between the passing and the matchup? How are you benching Justin Fields this week for anybody? Yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm right there with you because I got him as quarterback one this week as well. Thank and, you. And, and just and, and listen, we dumping on the Atlanta Falcons right now. They going to get it. They going to get it handed to them through the run game and through the passing game. Justin Fields, who remember early in the year, he wasn't throwing the ball a lot. Wasn't averaging more than 20 passing attempts a game. The past three games, he's thrown at least two touchdowns in each of those. So now you get Atlanta. Hell, I even like Darnell Mooney this week as well. <laughs> wow, Darnell Mooney, another yeah, Renaissance man with Cole I just, I just, I just like, I, I'm, I'm excited to see the NBC Sports Edge Twitter handle. You pull the do, do the pull quote, picture of Lawrence, picture of Darnell Mooney. Like, hell, I even like Darnell Mooney. <laughs> I even this like week. Darnell Mooney. That's the quote. That's the quote <laughs> from. Mooney. That's the quote that yeah. the social team will pull from that segment right there. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I. Like, what's the anti-Justin Fields argument? Just that he hasn't done it for a long for a long period of time? The one thing with Fields is that right now he's just reeling off like 68-yard touchdown runs every week. I'm not sure how sustainable that is. At the same time, I agree that this week he should be number one, mainly because the Chargers going up against Mahomes don't have any defensive tackles. So I feel like the, Ch uh, the Chiefs might run the ball more than usual. So I would probably take Mahomes over Fields rest of season, though that's close as well. Yeah, well but uh, this week... No. Justin Fields, number one. I mean, that's that's exactly right. The Chargers are 31st against the run over the last four weeks. I mean, like, yeah, again, and, yeah. and Pacheco, they're starting to get Pacheco more involved. So, yeah, I mean, look, you're not going to go wrong starting Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen. But I, I, I just, you know, I mean, Justin Fields, again, no Khalil Herbert. So, again, while I agree with you, the 68-yard rushing attempts aren't sustainable, although with him they may they be. Might be. They, I mean, <laughs> they might be. I, I said this earlier in the week, and I stand by it. What you are seeing with Justin Fields right now is Lamar Jackson 2019. Yep. That's what you're seeing. He is, he is literally, he is that dude. Yep. No, I agree with you there, just in terms of the sheer fantasy production. All right, Lawrence, let's talk about Eno Benjamin, another one of our favorites. The Texans claim him off of waivers from the Cardinals, mysteriously cut there. Still don't know what the full background is, but does Damian Pierce's stock take a hit with Eno Benjamin in town now? I, I wouldn't say so. I, I feel like they just, they may feel like they need a little bit better of a backup running back. Uh, not sure. Um, he looks like he looks like he's coming in there to uh, take the role that Rex Burkhead held. Um, I I feel like his main value would be in the absence of Damian Pierce. I can't. You can't. I mean, think about it. Just let's just be simple. Houston Texans two running backs standalone value. That don't even make no sense. No. Like <laughs> yeah, so. That's, so that's a great I, point. That's I, a in great that point. there. Yep, no. I, I agree with Lawrence here. I think this is much more of a, of a depth play. And look, they're a rebuilding team. You know, Benjamin's a young player with nice upside, right? I mean, like, it's just, they're just adding a piece, right? A, a relatively inexpensive piece to that running back room. Rex Burkhead's, I don't know, what is he, 46, 53, uh, something like that? I believe he's 78 years old. Uh, eight, that, that's my point. And, and so Pierce, who's averaging almost 20 carries a game since week seven, who's getting 79% of the team's rushing attempts, I, I agree, like, if I have him on my roster, I'm holding on to him because he's a high upside backup, right? If anything were to happen to Pierce, we'd be very excited. We think, you know, Benjamin would be, a, you know, a top 15-ish running back yeah. here. So I, if I had him on my team, I'm not necessarily dropping him. But I'm also understand that I don't think he has any standalone value. He is, he is a poor man's Tony Pollard or Alexander Madison. 
he is in, break glass in case of emergency. If something happens to Damian Pierce, he would immediately have fantasy value. But I don't think there's standalone value to him, like even in deeper flex leagues, just because like he'll probably take the Burkhead role. Yep. Right? And, and that's not a fantasy relevant role at the moment. To me, the most right. interesting thing about this transaction is that the Chiefs put in a waiver claim for Reno Benjamin. Does that spell the end of Clyde Edwards Hilaire? At least it's another kind of tick in that box that Edwards Hilaire is kind was, of trending below like, Dumpsville. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, in terms of spelling the end of it. I mean, I think we're at E-N-D. And the kid is on the stage saying, can you use it in a sentence? You know, uh, like, I mean, just, I, yes, certainly I, I would think the Andy Reid and the Chiefs don't feel like they have gotten as much production out of their running, their, the entirety of the running back room as they would have hoped for, right? I mean, because they had Ronald Jones in camp. He's done nothing, right? You know, uh, yeah. he didn't work out. Uh, so they have McKinnon, who they like a lot, but who's had a lot of injury issues. And they've got this, you know, late-round rookie in Isaiah Pacheco, who's shown flashes. But, again, he's a late-round rookie. Doesn't feel like they love Clyde edwards Lair. Again, Eno Benjamin is a good running back who proved himself when James Conner was out. Proved he could be a starting running back in the NFL. Yep. All right. Speaking of those Cardinals, news is broken that Kyler Murray is expected to miss around another week or so. He's not going to be playing this week against San Francisco. So Lawrence is looking like the James Conner show again, and you just fire him up in every league. Uh, yeah, you got to do that. I mean, you got to ride him. Uh, you got Colt McCoy in there. You still got Rondo Moore, who, by the way, his target share, 10-plus targets in the last two games, yeah. that doesn't drop off. You still got uh, DeAndre Hopkins, obviously, but you would – you would love to see the uh, the 24 touches again out of James Conner, but I think the, the the game script will have to dictate that. The Rams aren't good. We saw two mid-ass teams playing last week, and the Cardinals was the one that won the game. So <laughs> you bad game for four. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that's going to be the case with the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, that's the concern, right? I mean, the, the Niners are a really good run defense. They're third best over the last four weeks here. And so not only about game script, but how effective will he be, Will he be, especially without the threat of Kyler Murray, right? The, the, the volume was nice for James Conner, but really what made his fantasy day was the touchdowns. And I think yeah. there's still a chance of that. Yeah, I think you're still start. I don't know how after last week you're not starting yeah, James yeah, Conner. 24 um, touches. But I will say James Conner was a nice pass catcher. And the fact that... Um, uh, you know, Benjamin is not there. Maybe they lean on Connor even more. Um, and the other piece here is that no Zach Ertz. Now, you know, we'll see what happens with uh, McBride, you know, but ultimately, I think Rondell Moore is due for a big game. Colt McCoy doesn't have the biggest arm in yeah, the NFL. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't. No, he does not. <laughs> uh, being kind here. So, uh, yeah, for me, um, you know, I, I think the people that you care about on Arizona, Hopkins, Connor, Rondell Moore, they'll be fine, you know, but the, the, uh, the guys on the edges, maybe not as much with Colt McCoy. Although, you know, it's worth noting, Colt McCoy completed 75% of his passes in this last game. Colt McCoy is better than he gets credit for. He is. Let's talk about Rondell Moore specifically. Yeah. Is he still going to be, what is he, 15th in your rankings this week among wide yeah, receivers? I mean, he's going to stay there with Colt McCoy expecting that? That's what yeah. we're talking about. It's just like, again, like, Look at the – it's not just the, the amount of targets, but it's the kind of targets, right? It's bubble screens. It's, it's behind the line yes, of scrimmage stuff. Right. It's, it's, you know, it's quick slants over the middle. Like, it's just try, like, trying to get the ball in his hands. I was encouraged last week. They actually took some shots from downfield. You know, everyone was talking about the Justin Jefferson catch, and rightly so. But Rondell Moore also had a ridiculous one-handed yes, catch, yeah. you know, like just out there like this with a guy on him on the sideline. That, exactly that if like it that. wasn't – no, it, it – and look, honestly, like – if it wasn't for the Justin Jefferson catch, we all would have been talking. I feel bad for Rondell Moore. <laughs> I was mean, like, yeah, 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 whatever. Did you see what Justin Jefferson did? Uh, like, Stephon Diggs also had an insane one yes. catch in that game, too. It was just everything overshadowed by uh, JJ. J. Yeah, Can't correct. forget it. Kadarius Tony fixing the glove, then Mossin. That was also yes. on a ridiculous catch. A lot of good catches in week 10. A lot of good catches. But the fact of the matter is, is again, like, I'm. Yes, Rondell Moore will make my love list this week. Wow. I, I think Colt McCoy is actually good for Rondell Moore. Yeah, I, yeah. And Hopkins just gets so much volume that it doesn't really matter. Yep. So, okay. well, um, I, hope so our, yes. I hope our friends in Mexico like blowouts because that game could get very ugly. The Niners are eight-point favorites against the Cardinals. Let's talk about Jameis Winston, who we haven't spoken about for a while, but he looks like he's very much back in the mix to start. And when guys, when Dennis Allen is talking about, yeah, we might need to, we're considering a move at quarterback, that generally means, I'd say like Jameis Winston's like a minus 500 favorite to be starting against the Rams. It certainly seems like it's trending. Well, that it definitely direction. sounds like Dennis Allen has actually watched 
you know, some of the Saints games. Yeah, it looks like it. finally, finally, finally he finally, started. Like, I feel like <laughs> I feel like the game started. He's like he's he's putting on Netflix or something. You know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? Like, you know, or Peacock. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, and you're just like we like. Really, like, are you watching the same games we are? Because, like, <laughs> you know, how many guys you got to see <laughs> jiving into the end zone that aren't wearing your jerseys where you, yeah. that you think, well, hey, maybe we ought to maybe we ought to make a move here? We'll talk about Jameis, but firstly, I think it's more relevant. What does this mean for Chris Olave and Alvin Kamara? I don't think it means anything for our purposes. You're always starting Alvin Kamara. You're yeah. always starting Chris Olave. Always. So it doesn't uh, – Does is it slightly better? Is it slightly worse? Okay, fine. But I, for our purposes – in fantasy football, my expectation here is that I think it'll be slightly better. Um, it'll be slightly better for Olave. Olave likes to take um, – I'm sorry, Winston likes to take more deep shots there. Um, Chris Olave with Winston under center this year is averaging about a point and a half more than he is with Andy Dalton. He's got a, the, about the same amount of target share with Winston that he has with Dalton. Kamara actually is much worse with Winston yes. than Dalton. He's averaging – just about 15 fantasy points a game with Winston and 20 points a game with Andy Dalton. But again, you're starting out that, with Kamara. Yeah, that's a significant difference for Kamara, but you're going to take them 15 points and be happy. You might not get the 20, but hey, look, Jameis Winston has thrown 40 plus passes in two of his three games this season. Right. So you got to love that. And, and understand that it's, we're talking about a three game sample size of Winston with Kamara. Yeah. Who, he was, you know, Kamara was better with Winston last year than he was with Taysom Hill under center. I mean, like a lot of it comes down to like, oh, are we bringing in Taysom Hill and he's vulturing the touchdown? Or, you know, is Kamara getting into the end zone? Because it was a bit of a drought there for Kamara early on in the year and then the scoring yeah. has started yeah. to come around. You want to know where the Los Angeles Rams are at right now? They're four point underdogs to the New Orleans Saints. We don't know who's playing quarterback for the Saints coming Good off a blowout loss to the Kenny Pickett and the Pittsburgh Steelers. In, in fairness, in fairness to the Rams. Hmm. They have a lot of picks coming up, you know. <laughs> yeah. They've got their really good salary cap. This yep. was always a me meant to be a rebuilding year. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. That, none of that's true. Yeah. Fresh where, off the Super Bowl, rebuilding. Yeah. No. Here's where these two teams <laughs> the are The Saints don't have their pick either. Like, the, this is a – The total – I just – I always – I'm sorry. Let, that's petty of me. Listen, by the way, because as a, as a Commanders fan, <laughs> I trade all of it for, yeah, for, for, for another ring. You know, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, the, sure. Rams, the Rams – The Rams won. are playing – They are playing with house money. And I'm legitimately a fan of Les Snead and Sean McVay. Um, but uh, I'm just always excited when there are teams out there in the NFL that are in worse shape than the Commanders. Yeah, well, they right mean. now they are. And the, yeah, they are. the total for that game is 38 and a half. And the last time I checked, New Orleans still playing a dome. So uh, that's a very low total for a dome game. All right, All we're right. going to go to break. And I might actually take the under. I mean, like, you know, like. Oh, if it's that like low, you might as well. said like, the same thing with Titans Broncos. Couldn't get low enough. When we come back, keep it open or close it out. I'm just saying, like, listen, I'm not saying it's cause and effect. I'm merely pointing out these two facts, that after he did the interview with us and you declared him Raheem the Dream, Jeff Wilson Jr. shows up and takes oh. and takes over that back. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, facts are facts. Like, yeah. all that is a true <laughs> statement. Is one the cause of the other? Who knows, Jay? Who's to say? Yeah. Some people are saying, not me, but some people are saying you are to blame for the decline in Raheem Mostert's fantasy value. Now, listen, listen here, Matthew Barry. It's your name on the show, and Raheem the Dream Mostert, he's going to remember that 15 minutes oh. after he got off the fantasy football happy hour with Matthew Barry, they traded for a guy who's cutting his carries in half. All right, Raheem the Dream Mostert hasn't gone great for him after Ooh. that interview. Jeff Wilson taking over that backfield. But what makes yeah. me so happy is Raheem that... Raheem the Nightmare? Yeah, well, here's the thing. Raheem Mostert's probably not going to remember who I am. Because, I mean, he might remember who you are. And he's going to associate that trade with, oh, I just got off the fantasy football happy hour with Matthew Berry. Mm. And now uh, my, my fantasy value's gone in the tank. I'm not getting the same work. <laughs> it's not a good team. 
but uh, Matthew Barry yeah, kind of I mean, ruined my season. Yeah, probably. You know, you know who's going to be really angry at him is, the, is that Sam, that linebacker on his team. Remember who's got Raheem yeah. during the interview? Yeah, exactly. During the interview, he was he was tell, Raheem was telling him like that there's like you know some backup linebacker on his team that <laughs> yeah. was coming up to him, being like, "Yo, Raheem, I got you on my fantasy team. I need you to do this and this and this." Yeah. And I wonder if he dropped Raheem for yeah. Jeff Wilson. Yeah. And that'd be messed up, man. Yeah, right. I, yeah, yeah, I actually heard that Sam actually unsubscribed from the podcast after uh, after what you did to him. I hope there. I hope you don't unsubscribe. We need people that look. You don't subscribe. actually have to listen to the podcast. Just subscribe. Just subscribe, rate, review, please. Yeah. It helps us. It keeps my bosses at NBC happy, right? You know, it, it keeps the the people that put the apple up. You know, Marlon mini, Ma Marlon, mini Marlon McIntosh over there. <laughs> um, so anyway, second coming of Marlon that's, McIntosh. That's fair, that's fair enough. If, if if your argument is that people that watch this show don't remember you, Jay, that's fine. <laughs> I understand. That's fair. Got to fair. Ask an answer. <laughs> All right. Ask an answer. That's why we bring Lawrence. In. Yeah. Keep it open or close it out. Let's jump into it now. I'm not, having, I'm not having you explaining it again. Go ahead, explain it. So yeah. it's basically, are this you keeping fun. these guys in your lineup for week 11, or are you closing it out and putting them on your bench? Let's start, Lawrence, with Alan Lazard, who now is in Christian Watson's uh, receiving we're in a bar. Court. It's because yeah. we're in a bar. It's like the tab. Keep the open, oh, no. the tab open, yeah. keep it closed. You didn't explain it. The minus 600 caches. That, I'm just, uh, you didn't explain it. it. Explain, explain it, it like that. Here, go right here. Alan Lazar, I'm going to keep it open with a nice little double shot. Okay, wow. Then we're gonna keep I it. want to party with you, Cowboy. Yeah, let, let's do it. Let's do it. Now, Christian Watson, this is what we've been wanting to see from him. Yes, sir. He, he blew up, right? I'm not going to take one four catch for 45-yard game and no touchdowns from Alan Lazar and just be like, oh, he's nothing now. Remember, coming into last week, he was a top 15 wide receiver. This could actually be good for Alan Lazar. Now there's other people Aaron Rodgers has to throw the ball to. That's great. Alan Lazard has still scored a touchdown in three of his last five games. They're going against Tennessee. That's a, This is a nice – hell, I like Green Bay to win if we just go, like, speak on it like that. But, uh, Minus 165. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm keep, yeah, yeah, I'm keep I'm gonna keep this open. Um, I am shocked about that, by the way, that the Packers are three point favorites in this one. Yeah, per trending bet. towards three and a half as well. Not a lot of respect for uh, the six and three yeah, Tennessee Titans leading not, the not, so. not at all. Aaron Rodgers has one good game. Like you know, oh, and yeah, all of a sudden they're really, back in. Christian Watson had one good game for him. The fact of the matter is, is that four of the last six games, Alan Lazard's had at least eight targets. Um, he's had double digit fantasy points in six of eight games so far this year. The Tennessee Titans are bottom five in pass defense since week seven. Um, we know how good they are as a run defense. Yeah. So my expectation is, I, I agree with Lawrence here, keeping uh, the emergence of, of Christian Watson. By the way, I think they're going to get Randall Cobb back this week as well. Not that we care about Randall Cobb for fantasy, but there's just another weapon that the Titans yeah. are going to have to deal with uh, that can help sort of move the chains and keep drives alive for the Packers. I've Lazard as wide receiver 19 this week. So, yeah, I'm absolutely keeping it open. Yep. I think you mentioned the key point, which is the Titans' run defense. And this is like last year's Bucks run yep. defense. And I always think back to that Colts Bucks game last year when Jonathan Taylor was running hot and Frank Reich just gave up on the run. And he passed with Carson Wentz, I think, 21 times in a row without a run. And we saw Mahomes against the Tennessee pass de uh, rushing defense as well. They just gave up on the run. It's just passing all the time. And now with Watson creating a bit of space for Lazard, too, I think that he should be. Be able to deliver uh, a guy who did not deliver last week as he never does on the road Amari Cooper now plays at Buffalo in what looks like tough conditions open or close on Amari Cooper Matthew I I'm going to close it out if I can now I'm at wide receiver 22 which means he's like a high-end wide receiver three but the fact of the matter is is in an ideal world you're not starting him here's the key here I got two words for you this is this is the key here at Buffalo Boom. he is at in fact that's the most key word <laughs> is at yeah. mm -hmm. at because when he has been on the road this year, he's averaging us under six fantasy points per game, under uh, 34 scrimmage yards per game, four targets a game. He was on the hate list last week because he was on the road. And you know what? I was right. He did not have a good game. And you're like, oh, come on, Barry. It's just a couple of games on the road. It's, it's small his sample size. It's his whole <laughs> career. It's his whole career. For his career, when he was with the Raiders, when he was with the Cowboys, for his career, he averages just 11.5 fantasy points per game, under six, 55 yards from scrimmage. And then on the road, I'm um, sorry, at home, 16.4. So five points better at home, 77 yards from scrimmage. So basically uh, oh, oh, 23, he, five fantasy points better, 23 yards from scrimmage better at home than on the road. For his career, he has always been uh, poor on the road, 
Heavy snow is expected in Buffalo on Ooh. Sunday. Yeah. I am closing it out on Amari Cooper for this week if I can. Uh, you you put the numbers there well, and I'll just bring uh, fans back to this. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles game where the Cowboys, was they were playing for the division a couple years back. Mario Cooper is a little cold. He, <laughs> cold. He, he said, hey, coach, let me get out of the game. He took himself out of the game, and Stefan, you know, no, sorry. But, you know, yeah, man, we it, it's tough. And, and like you said, it's not just two or three games. This has been happening, so I'm closing it out, going home, he's night, never, night. He's never been great in cold weather. Yes. He, he, he Traditionally throughout his career, again, it's snow. It's going to be snowing in Buffalo. The Bills need to win this game. The Bills have dropped in the playoff teams. The Bills are like, what the hell? Yep. We're supposed to be the, We're supposed to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs, and now we're like, but you know, we're we're a loss or two away from being out of the playoffs. Like you know, I mean, like right. I mean, because you know, Miami's they, been. They're going to show up for this game. They're nine and a half point favorites as well. To. But just with the weather, I mean, this Amari Cooper thing is just statistically one of the weirdest anomalies yeah. in the NFL. Like normally, I just dismiss this stuff as chance. Yeah, I've talked about yeah. before, like. I, I don't think Kyle Shanahan owns Sean McVay. I think he individually won seven different games against Sean McVay for very different reasons yep. and also lost the one that mattered most in the NFC Championship game. But this one now, there's such a sample size that I think you just, you can't explain it, but you just accept that it is a thing. He was wide receiver 62 last week in much better weather, but yep. on the road, and now he's going to Buffalo. No, thank you. Yep. Okay, let's move on to Brandon Cooks against your Washington Commanders, Lawrence what are we doing with Brandon Cooks after seven targets, which is okay, but only four receptions for 42 yards last week against the Giants? Look, there's a chance he could bounce back here, but Nico Collins is back. Nico Collins got 10 targets the last game. And how about them commanders? Them boys is balling right now. Thank you. Huh? Where did, where not where paid, not paid to say that. Lawrence hey, is trying to get back on the show. He's... You know what? You know what Lawrence is? I'm gonna keep... Lawrence is smart. <laughs> yeah. Hey. yeah. Listen, you, I, on the hey, other listen, hand, I, yeah. hey, yeah. I will roast the commanders yeah, if right. need be. But what did AJ Brown do? Nothing. He didn't do nothing. Nah. So, I mean, and uh, Brandon Cooks, he don't even like the team he are right now. He <laughs> he mad he sure. didn't get traded. Uh, he only got Nico Collins had ten targets. He been hurt. Brandon Cooks supposed to be the wide receiver one in that team, and he's only had two games this year with ten plus targets. Closing that out, man. Uh, especially because, by the way. Texans actually have a decent pass defense. They have, a, but they are 32nd in the NFL against the run. No historically team, bad against his, the run. No, right, historically bad. No team in the NFL over the last four weeks have allowed more rushing yards per game. What do we think Washington's going to do? It's the same thing they did against Philadelphia. They're going to yes. run the ball, run the ball. It's a lot of Brian Robinson, a lot of Antonio Gibson. If McKissick gets back, he'll be in the mix as well. So now you're not going to have a lot of possessions as well. Brandon Cooks has just two games, as you mentioned, with double digit targets, right? I mean, like, he's had fewer than 60 receiving yards in six of eight games, single digit fantasy points in five of eight. Something weird is going on there in Houston. There's no question about it. Commanders are playing pretty good defense here. And so, Brandon Cooks, who's my 40th ranked wide receiver this week, I'm absolutely closing it out on him. Yep. Chase Young back as well to help that pass defense by getting after the quarterback. You can't, and, you uh, can't throw a pass when you're in your back. Yeah. Davis Mills isn't afraid of getting sacked too. Let's talk about one of your favorites, Josh Palmer, playing Kansas City this week. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams both expected back at practice. So this is kind of you have to hedge your bets a little bit. If yep. those two guys are back, though, are you starting Josh Palmer? I'm not. If both those guys are back, you know, and, and there's only been one game in which both Palmer has played with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. But in that one game, 3.9 fantasy points. Um, and, and so my, my expectation here is that, um, and you think about last year, he averaged just 3.2 fantasy points per game when both Williams and uh, Keenan Allen were on the field. So I don't know that that passing offense is good enough and that there's enough targets to go around uh, for Palmer to have success here if Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are both active. If one of them misses, then yes, I'm still starting Josh Palmer in what should be a high-scoring game against the Chiefs. Yep. Um, by the way, that game right here on NBC and Peacock Sunday yep. night, I'm a company good man. Yes, totally. sir. Thank yes, you sir. very much. Should, totally. be a, should be a really good one. It got flexed into the yeah. Sunday night game. I always like that. I like the flex. Yeah. My Shows old that, main business. Well, loyal, my old gig, we were always just like, we'd always like, we, we never <laughs> got the, we, yeah. Monday Night Football never got flexed. Yeah. It was always just like, hey, Titans, Jags. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Derrick Henry might go off. Yeah. Like, and you always had to like try to figure out a yeah. way to like try to sell it. Like, yeah. um, Maurice Jones Drew coming more, up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was just always just like, it was always a struggle to try to sell the game. Um, and that's why fantasy was just like, hey, Monday Night Miracle. That was the whole yeah. thing, you know, reason to watch. Um, 
Here we don't have to. Uh, so I like the ability of NBC <laughs> to just be able to. Oh, let, we'll just pick a good game. Yes. This this game Let's that was scheduled Patrick Mahomes four again. months ago. Yeah. That one yeah. stinks. But what, fine. We'll put uh, we'll put Patrick Mahomes <laughs> back on Sunday Night Football. Um, that'll work. Uh, anyway, so I'm closing it out on Josh Palmer under the assumption that Allen and Williams are both active. If one of them misses, give me Josh Palmer again. Yeah. He's currently wide receiver 33 for me. Yeah, and I'm going to close it too because the three straight games with eight-plus targets is really a moot point. It doesn't even really matter if Keenan Allen and both Mike Williams play because just think about it. When you were doing your fantasy drafts this season, right, you saw Keenan Allen get drafted. You saw Mike Williams get drafted. Maybe people took a flyer way later rounds on Josh Palmer, but nobody thought about starting him ever if Keenan Allen and Mike Williams was playing. So like you said, if it's one of them starting one or the other, you start them. But if it's both of them, close that tab. Yep. All right, Lawrence, let's talk about Miles Sanders, who was shut down by Matthews Washington Commanders. Now he gets another tough they matchup took against command. the oh, against the rejuvenated Indianapolis Colts. He start are you keeping it open on Miles Sanders? This guy, I'm going to keep it open for Miles Sanders. Yeah. The team's too good. The offense is too good. The running game is too good. It just wasn't against the commanders who get Chase Young back. Uh, but in the three games prior to that uh, domination that the commanders put on the Eagles, Miles Sanders has at least 70 yards rushing in all of those games, and he scored in all of those games. So I'm going to keep that open, and this time I'm going to sip. <laughs> Fair enough. I I'm keeping, him, I'm keeping it open, too, as well. But, I mean, I have been running back 22, so I have it's a high-end flex this week. I, he hasn't been involved in the passing game recently. Zero receptions the last three games. Like, zero receptions as well. Um, so he really needs a touchdown here to pay off. You know, and I think he's got a chance. But the Colts play pretty good run defense. They, you know, they're 1-0 under Jeff Sunday. You know, and so um, I'm going to make that a thing, Jeff Sunday. I'm going to make that happen. It's a thing. Yeah, you've made it up. I, I, I'm going. Yeah, to, I'm so. going to. I'm going to keep making it a thing. Keep pushing the agenda. Uh, um, last four weeks, they're a top seven run defense. The Colts are, and, and so um, right, and they're getting healthier as well. So I'm keeping it open, but I'm lowering expectations and, and just you know. Um, but I think I agree with Lawrence ultimately that that offensive line is too good. Philadelphia was embarrassed on Monday Night Football by losing to my <laughs> command. Yeah, yes, they had a yes, bad day. We heard bad about day. That, bad yeah. day. I, I, but. Uh, there is there is slight concern here. I would just say you know, yep. again because of the lack of the passing game usage. I'm uh, I'm going to call my shot right now. The Colts win that game outright as six and a half point dogs. They beat the Eagles I plus two forty. I'm Jonathan Taylor going against that run defense. That is fair. The rejuvenated Indianapolis reju Colts playing hard. Yeah, the Eagles team yeah. is really banged up as well. No, Dallas got it. What's going on with the receivers? I like the they're Colts. They're, and by the way, games in Indy, they're traveling yep. on a short week. Yep. Eagles are. Exactly. So Six yeah. and a half is too many points. I like, I I like, I like, I like them to cover, absolutely, the yeah. Colts to cover. I agree with you. Jonathan Taylor, I think, you know, I have Jonathan Taylor very, very high. Yes. All right, let's talk Which about Kareem game. Hunt, who is trending in Must the week? wrong direction. Matthew playing Buffalo. Six rushing attempts against the Dolphins in a game that admittedly got out of hand pretty quickly, but he's keeping it open on Kareem Hunt. He needs volume because, I mean, again, like, we don't expect them to score a ton of points, right? And so, and we know that generally speaking, when they get close, it's going to go to Nick Chubb. So, just what are your expectations that Kareem Hunt gets a ton of work in this one? In games in which he's had fewer than 15 touches, and 15 touches is a lot. That's a lot. On a, it's a lot, especially on a team that has Nick Chubb. So in games in which he's gotten fewer than 15 touches, he's averaging 7.1 fantasy points per game. Bad weather in a game script that is not going to be favorable, I think, to him. You know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm closing it out on Kareem Hunt. He's running back 32 for me this week. So because of that weather, right, you could, like you said, you kind of expect like a, a, a running type of game, a la like Bills versus Patriots, so Mac Jones threw it three times. Um, the thing about this is you mentioned the six carries last game. He's averaged six and a half carries the last four games. Yeah. Like, that's not going to get it. So, I'm um, like, because of the weather and what type of game it they could be. They were willing to trade him at the deadline. They couldn't yeah, find a deal, too. but, like, yeah. it's not like they were like, we love this guy. Yeah, it's going south for that team in general as well. That was a huge loss for their playoff hopes. And the total in that game in Buffalo, but Buffalo, pretty good offense, by the way, is 42 and a half. Right, so that, And the line is eight, so the market is saying the expected final score is like 25-17. 17 points for Cleveland. That's not so enough. So now you're saying Kareem. they scored two touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, and what are they, no, right. Yeah. No, and so then you're like, what are the odds that Kareem Hunt gets one of those yeah, 
touchdowns. Two touchdowns. One for Chubb and yeah. one for one of the receivers. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and Donovan in Peoples Jones. Yeah, yeah. DPJ. Yeah. The, the, exactly. the guy you want in Cleveland right. now. Or maybe apparently. Njoku. I could see Njoku getting yeah. one. Njoku back. Right. All right. We're going to go to break. When we come back, what's on tap? Starring my man, my ride or die, Lamar Jackson. Yes, sir. The best running quarterback in the NFL yes, outside sir. Justin We're Fields. in a bar. And that, what's yeah. on tap? Yes, the tap. It pours the, yeah, you get the pours beer the out. the beer. Of it. Yeah. Doesn't How really hard is this? What's the greatest criticism, I guess because you don't really hear it, but that you've heard about your game? I don't heard all type of crazy stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really know what's the craziest thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Probably when I was coming into the league, like, oh, trying off a running back, receiver, like, stuff like that. Yeah. I'm like, nobody told me this. Like, I never got this, but yeah. Literally my favorite quote from you. Pretty good for a running back. Oh yeah, yeah, 2019, I remember that. I remember that, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was, I didn't, I didn't even think it was gonna go like viral, like as a quote, but it did. That was the 2019 unanimous MVP Lamar Jackson with Maria Taylor, and you can catch the Great. full Football Night in America interview between Lamar and Maria That's on the lot. NFL you on could... NBC YouTube channel. Yeah, on the NFL on N... check out the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. I feel like there's a lot you could learn personally from Lamar Jackson. You. What do you mean? I'm just saying. Like <laughs> I would me. just. Here's what I would say. Okay. Like I just. I'm go. gonna help you out. Here, give me one second. Just turn off the camera for a second. Don't. <laughs> don't. This is just between me and me and Jay. We'll cut this out later. Okay. But just like what you should do is when you get that look of disappointment from other people around here, right? And I've seen it. I've seen it a lot. We've all seen it. Here's Joking. what you just do. Here's what, no, no, you, you know it. You know it when you see, like, Where after you've done a going? after you've done a hit or you've done the show yeah. and, like, just in meetings oh, and that kind of stuff. And people just have that time. kind of that disappointment. Look, you just say, hey, pretty good for an Australian. <laughs> pretty good for That's what I'm just saying. You just, you, pretty you, good you, for you, you, Right, exactly. Yeah. You just. The parallels just, between me and Lamar Jackson. Exactly. I'm just saying, like, just learn from Lamar. Can we talk about. Pretty good for an Australian. And then they're just like, oh, that's right. You know, we should grade you on a curve. Listen. Just, I'm, just, I'm trying to help. All right, you can roll. Just cut. We'll cut all that out. Just go ahead. Yeah, all right, wow. let's go. Okay. Chris, We're Hems back. Chris Hemsworth is one of the great superheroes on earth, as you repeatedly say. He's Australian. He's in my corner, me and Chris. He's one of, he plays a superhero. Chris he, Hemsworth isn't really a superhero. He's a superhero. Now listen. Thor is a superhero, and Chris Hemsworth portrays him I very see well, by the way. largely the one and the same man. Do you want to talk about what we were talking about on the pre-call about how you were saying Jalen Hurts is just as good as Lamar Jackson? Oh, you want to take that back? That's a travesty. Oh. That's completely indefensible. Can I have? Can Lamar have Ooh, AJ yeah. Brown and the Eagles' offensive line? Little Devontae oh. Smith, who by the way would be Lamar clearly Jackson the best a, receiver. Lamar Jackson has a very good offensive line, by the way, and he's had Marquise Brown. He has Mark Andrews, by the way. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. In the preseason, I I declared my ride or die. Jalen Hurts, my fantasy ride or die, because it is a fantasy How football show. Uh, and uh, uh, he, 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 look, there's all, he's a human. He's a human being. <laughs> he's, like, not, you know, he's not Chris Hemsworth? No, well, yeah, Washington took command. It is oh. what it is. By the way, Jalen Hurts still had a good fantasy day, even in a game in which everything that could have gone did. wrong for the Eagles went wrong. Jalen Hurts still got in the end zone, still threw a touchdown pass. Here's what I will tell you, though. So I said Jalen Hurts is my fantasy ride or die, yep. and everyone, fantasy managers across America, are like, thank you, Matthew Berry. We love you. We appreciate you. You're awesome. You're pretty good, <laughs> period. And then, but here, pretty good for an Australian, says, hey, Lamar Jackson is my fantasy ride or die. And B. Rubes throw up the full screen here in terms of what's <laughs> going on with Lamar Jackson. For somebody that was, you know, one of the top five picks at quarterback here, he was awesome early. You were looking great early, Jay. That was a 20, genius. 20, 42, 39. Wait, and then 13, 14, 16, 10. What's going on? Like, there's a four-week stretch there where he back. couldn't get to 17 fantasy points. How's back. that a ride or die? I got he got 21 against the Bucks, 17 against the Saints. Okay, fine, but make no mistake. Look, I, look. What you should say as I sit here and criticize your fan, your Lamar Jackson <laughs> fantasy ride or die call is just, hey, pretty good for an Australian. <laughs> Listen, that's the that's the response. I got two words and five syllables for you. What's that? Devin Duvernay, who's my Lamar Jackson, me and Lamar. He's our number one wide receiver, okay. and we're still putting up mm. top six mm. QB value. Mm. Uh, Lamar is Jackson he? is coming in hot. Does he is get right he? against the Panthers, Lawrence? Not only is he gonna get right, he gonna get points. right to the point. I See, like I was points. with you on the Commanders, yeah, but this right here, when we're talking about Lamar Jackson. Not only love can, Lamar Jackson. Not, 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 no, not only, but not my, as much as I love Jalen Hurts. My cousin and by the way, Lamar I'm Jackson. Right. <laughs> I'm right. We Tell got, me I'm right, America. You know I'm right. Hey, look, we got plenty to play, and guess what? It starts with Lamar at home versus the Panthers. I like it. Then the Jaguars. Then sure. the Broncos, who have a good defense, but they're totally as a whole, they're playing yeah, yeah. uninspired football. 
uh, than the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have a matchup with the Falcons down the line in the middle of the fantasy playoffs. Lamar Jackson is going to get back right, and he's going to be in the play for QB1 for the season. He's coming back, baby. Jackson's Listen, Unite. I listen. I have Lamar in a number of leagues. I guess I, I, I yeah, Lawrence, Lawrence and Lamar. Yeah, your long lost cousin. I know. Look, the fact of the matter is, is since Walking week three, since week three, uh, I've seen him play flag football. I've seen video. <laughs> yeah. I've seen video of Lawrence. Yeah. Little yeah. 2019 MVP. Yeah, I don't know about that, yeah. but like, you know, I don't anonymous. throw. I don't throw though. No, I, I never throw. He went out to the fantasy football expo <laughs> and like ran circle. Now I understand. Fantasy football experts, a lot of fantasy experts, like it's a bunch, <laughs> yeah. a bunch of fat dudes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like the bar was low for yeah. Lawrence, but he still looked pretty good. That's how Lamar looked in 2019. Yeah. He made a, a lot of right, fat exactly. dudes couldn't catch it. It's true. Yeah. Right. Well, like just it. yeah. Just anyway, uh, <laughs> what I will say, we, what I will say is that since week three, his best fantasy finish is QB ten. Yeah, that's fine. That's he's not ride or die territory. That's that's right. Well, it, but you knew that going into the season. No, no, I knew back. going into the season, my guy had A.J. Brown. Uh, I knew my guy had Dallas Goddard. Listen. I knew my guy had Devontae Smith. You knew your guy had, you know. We liked Rashad Bateman in the preseason. I wanted more out of Rashad Bateman. He gave me absolutely nothing, but Lamar is still coming but back. I think the point here, other than the fact that, you know what, again, you've got a catchphrase now, pretty good for an Australian. <laughs> I think the other thing that we've learned here today is that we expect good things for Lamar Jackson, and and even though he had that long dip in the middle of the season, we have him as a top. I have him as a top five quarterback this week. I do think this is a big get right game against the Carolina Panthers. Yep. Let's talk about a couple guys who absolutely did not win MVP in 2019, and that's Zach Wilson and Mac Jones, who are coming okay. off a bye. If that means anything to anyone. Uh, Matthew, I'll start with you. Are these guys good enough to support top pass catchers like Jacoby Myers, Garrett Wilson? I prefer Jacoby Myers to Garrett Wilson this week. But, yes, I think both guys will be good enough to make them viable in fantasy. I, look, Jacoby Myers comes in as wide receiver 20, right? You think about the previous team game against the Jets in week eight. He had 21 fantasy points in that game, right? 13 targets against the Jets in that game, which tied a season high. He's averaging almost seven targets a game with Mac Jones, which is more than he had with Bailey Zappi under center as well. So, Jacoby Myers, who's had at least 60 receiving yards in five of the seven games that he's played uh, so far this year, he's a top 20 wide receiver for me. Garrett Wilson, uh, Lawrence, I'm in on him as I'm in on him as well as yeah, a top yeah. 30 wide receiver. Yeah. So, like like this, the the quarterback play here is is not the greatest, but what is great is that you know that these two are the solidified options. If both of these quarterbacks throw for 175 yards, both of these guys have a good chance to have 100 of those each, and they demonstrated that in their matchup a, a couple of weeks ago. So despite the quarterback play or whatever you want to say about it, it's actually too – well, I think the Jets are a solid team. I think the Patriots are pretenders. But nevertheless, I think both receivers – could uh, still do solid numbers. Week, week eight, he, week eight against these same Patriots. Garrett Wilson had 115 yards coming right. off of the bye. They've they've had two weeks to prepare for this game and figuring out like and they've spent and I you know I have sources on the team. They've spent two weeks figuring out different ways to get the ball to Garrett Wilson and new ways to ignore Elijah Moore. Like they have like <laughs> that's they have what it seemed like. They have, they have studied the tape. They're like <laughs> it's, it's not the just a, the barrel yeah, it's just yeah, it's exactly. It's just like we've got to find it new and creative ways to yeah. make sure Elijah Moore doesn't touch the ball. Like you know, like hey, we're gonna have him do skits at halftime. That sort of like they're finding it all sorts of really interesting ways to make sure Elijah Moore does not touch the ball. They've really dug deep into the film work there. Garrett Wilson just has a massive target share with Zach Wilson under center. He's the one Jets viable pass catcher I think you can start in this one Tyler Conklin's whatever you know a mid-tier tight end two that you hope gets in the end zone and I think you're starting Michael Carter if you have him but uh Garrett Wilson and target share it's wide receiver 27 for me so far on the season he's wide receiver 30. What do you think Zach Wilson did on his bye week Matthew? Uh, I mean I, I think he you know <laughs> <laughs> hey, I hear my ears. hey, don't, hey, don't, don't. be asking about nobody's stepdaddy on the TV show. Right. I just, I think he's, you know. He I out think, there stepdaddy, and that's what he doing. Yeah, I mean, I just he think, you know, I think he, I think he met a lot of moms. Right. He, you, you know, know, I, just, I see you right up for it. That's the best you got. I just, you lost it. You I played know, it safe. I, I lost you it. played it safe. You stuck I, with the Zach Wilson offense. You didn't uh, want to, like, uh, beat, to you don't throw deep. I wanted to say something else. Yeah. I just, you know, um, and I just, I, you know. Uh, whatever. I mean, I just, you know, like I just. <laughs> Stop saying, you know. I just, I, I think, I, here's what, I, I, from what I understand, 
he was a guest speaker. You know, he, he's a very generous guy with his time. He likes yeah. to he likes to give back to the community and you know do like personal events. And so sure. he had. Um, three different mommy and me's he went to you know the classes at three different mommy and me's just to you know chill you know just to like you know sign some autographs take some photos yeah. you know yeah, just network right, right. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah, kiss some babies broncos yeah. offense uh lawrence does it get right against the raiders in week 11. um in any other situation i say hell no but they playing these Ra these raiders man these raiders is so damn bad in the gutter like, I got to go with him this week. I, like, I, I don't really have any, you know, I don't have anything great to say about it. Uh, clearly, the Denver Broncos defense is good. Uh, if, the, if the Broncos would have scored at least 18 points in every game this season, they'd be 8-1. and one. Now, That's crazy to think about. Yep. Week 4 against the Raiders, as you can see on your screen, if you're watching on the YouTube channel or on Peacock, Russell Wilson had his best fantasy game of the season by far against the Raiders. It's the only time he's topped 18 fantasy points. He topped 27. Cortland Sutton and Greg Dolchich might be the only interesting things on the Broncos' side of the ball. He's starting both of those guys against the insipid Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, I, I am actually. I mean, Russ Wilson, by the way, is going to make the love list uh, when it comes oh out tomorrow yeah. as well. Like, you know, I mean, like, let's not get crazy. But I'm at QB 11, which given how poorly he's played so far this year, um, I think would surprise people, but you know, it's a con it's a rule in fantasy football, and it's been there since the since the beginning of time. If you can revive Matt Ryan, you can revive anyone, and that's what the uh, Raiders did last week. So I think oh, yeah. Russell Wilson has a good game here. You asked about Dulcis. I will just say that he's had at least 11 fantasy points in three of the four games he's played. We don't expect Jerry Judy to play in this game, so more targets should be available for Dulcis, who's you know. Not it's not a matchup that scares you against the Las Vegas Raiders as well. You mentioned Cortland Sutton. He comes in at wide receiver 13. Again, you think about last year, weeks two through seven. Those were the weeks that Jerry Judy did not play in 2021. Right. In those games, weeks two through seven, he was averaging over nine targets a game. He had three different games with over 23 fantasy points. You know, uh, this is somebody who should have a big target share in a game in which we expect them to score uh, quite a bit. Denver, for as bad as they are, is actually favored in this game. And, uh, the, and, and the, Raiders, <laughs> the Raiders are a bottom 10 pass defense over the last month. Yep. Denver defense is legitimate. Let's talk about my Indianapolis Colts. I'm really buying into the Colts <laughs> bandwagon. I really like them going forward. They're not Matthew, your Colts. Yeah, they're my Colts. Yeah. I'm a big Jonathan Taylor guy. I was very early on the JT bandwagon. Sure. And, uh, and let me tell you, I'm right back on it right now. Are you <laughs> buying the Renaissance under Coach of the Year Jeff Saturday? Still 150 to 1 at Bet MGM. And as Jonathan Taylor, most importantly, is, has he cemented himself as a top five running back going forward? Yeah, I think so. I mean, just the volume and the fact that the offensive line is playing better. Credit to Jeff Sunday, at least for that. I will say that, as we saw, and we talked about earlier in the show, Colts are, I'm sorry, the Eagles are traveling yep. on a short week, and you can run oh, yes. on the Eagles. In fact, while we were, uh, while we're doing this show, Got an alert from the Fantasy Life app, which is free, by the way, and great, highly recommended, fantasylifeapp.com. Uh, I got an alert from the Fantasy Life app that uh, the Eagles are signing Linval Joseph. Yeah. You know, played with Me the Eagles. Right? You know, I'm sorry, played with the Vikings. Yeah. And, you know, he's, he's played for a few teams. Uh, but, that, like, they're, he, he was basically retired, and they're trying to get him out. I, I think it, he's, he played 12 seasons in the NFL and wasn't, was, uh, you know, was sitting at the couch at home, and they're like, hey, please come yeah. try That's to help us out there. Uh, so... He's not going to be there to help out this week. Traveling on a short week, going against um, uh, Jonathan Taylor, who had 24 touches last week, 85% of the running back carries here. We'll see if Deion Jackson is active for this one. He wasn't last week, but whatever. Over the last four weeks, the Eagles are a bottom five run defense. Yep. We saw what the commanders were able to do to them on Monday Night Football when they took command yep. and defeated them. Yep. Also, with that commanders game, the Commanders only had 3.1 yards per carry, but if yep. you look deeper into the numbers, yeah, their success yeah. rate in terms of running the ball, because a lot of those runs were like, oh, it's third and one, and we got one yard, yes. that's a good run. And so yes. that's why it dragged down the yards per carry. Eagles' run defense wasn't good in that game, despite that fact. Let's so that, and that's my expectation, too, is that you know Jeff Saturday and his staff see that, and they're like, okay, we're just going to – we've got one of the best – you know, as much as I like Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson, neither of them are as good as Jonathan Taylor. He's just a little. 
He's right. a different caliber. Let's talk about the pass catches, Michael Pittman and the rejuvenated Paris Campbell. He's starting those guys with confidence against the Eagles. So we're going to go back to starting Michael Pittman like the wide receiver too he was supposed to be. But I like the, the value you get here in Paris Campbell. He was, just, he was just on waivers. Some people probably got him off waivers. And he's been balling with Matt Ryan. The two games with uh, Sam... The, same, the two games with Sam Elliger, not so much. So I, I like Paris Campbell as a flex play. You could put Michael Pittman back into the uh, wide receiver two spot. Paris Campbell, 18-plus fantasy points in three of the last five games. And guess who was that quarterback? Matt Ryan. There we right. go. I right. love it. The two, ga- the two games that he didn't get there or the two Sam Ellinger games, right? And, and so as Matt Ryan, who's not particularly mobile, as plays break down, he's trying to throw – He's trying to look for a guy, and so Paris Campbell runs a lot of his routes close to the line of scrimmage, is the beneficiary there. It's worth noting that the Eagles are top 10 in the NFL in terms of highest catch rate allowed to the slot where Paris Campbell runs Mm -hmm. most of his routes as well. Again, think about Philadelphia and how good those corners are in Slay and Bradbury, and so the middle of the field makes sense as to where you might attack Philadelphia when you're not running the ball. So Paris Campbell, wide receiver 26 for me this week. Lawrence and I are on the same page there. I think he's a viable flex. Yep, not very mobile. Matt Ryan wants you to look at his 39-yard Yeah, I was about uh, to say the same thing. He's he's Lamar Jackson 2.0. We're going to go to break when we come back. Sunday Night Football NBC Sports Predictor Contest. We'll talk Chiefs and Chargers. The NFL season is here, and the NBC Sports Predictor app is giving you a shot at winning $100,000 by entering Sunday Night 7's free contest between the Chiefs and the Chargers. So if you don't have the NBC Sports Predictor app, go download it now. It is free. It costs no money. All right, Matthew, let's answer some of these predictor questions. I'm going to start. Travis Kelsey receiving yards. His bands go from 55 or less all the way through 115 plus. I don't feel good about it, but I'm going to take 55 or less. You know why? Because against the Chargers last time, he got less than 55. Derwin James might be the best matchup in the league for Travis Kelsey or close. So just getting that bigger band, more range of outcomes, I'm going to take basically the under on Travis Kelsey. What are you doing for Justin Herbert passing yeah, yards? Uh, I'm going to take the 290 passing yards to 309 option there. Think about the Week 2 game against the Chiefs. Herbert threw for 334 yards. Over 290 passing yards in four different games so far this season. Uh, So my expectation here, though, is is that even if Williams and Keenan Allen are back, maybe they're slightly, um, they're not 100%. They haven't been on the field with Herbert for a while. So I'm taking slightly under what he did previously against them. Give me the 290 to 309. They'll be they'll be trailing and and uh, and throwing quite a bit. But Herbert. Herbert struggled, and it's a bunch of dink and dunk. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's stick on Justin Herbert, who hasn't topped 300 yards for five straight games, which was basically unheard of for Justin Herbert. Is he still an elite fantasy quarterback, Lawrence? He still can be. Um, And you just mentioned not throwing for 300 yards in five games. That's happening despite in those five games, averaging 44 passes a game. That's a lot of passes not to throw. Uh, 300 yards also is only thrown five yeah, TDs. He keeps dumping it off. That's the problem. Yep. Right, right. So let's see Let's see what he does when he gets Keenan Allen back and Mike Williams because that's what people was telling me when I said two attack of a low was better. <laughs> so, but yeah, he can still be that. Just get your weapons back. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Matthew? Do you, you're not cutting the cord on Justin. No, Hill, you're absolutely not. Really yeah, can't, can't cut not, the cord. But he's like, he's... He's in a different tier, right? I mean, like the the, the elite quarterback to, a tier, and it's sort of insane. To, but it's it's Mahomes and it's Josh Allen and it's Jalen Hurts and it's um, Tua, you know, yeah, and it's le- Justin legitimate. Fields, yeah. and maybe if, if 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 Lamar Jackson does what we think he can against uh, the Ravens, I'm sorry, against the Panthers for the Ravens, he would be in that tier. But then there's like a second tier, like, and so Justin Herbert's more in the Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray tier. I think, True. you know, than he is um, in that, that elite tier as well. But speaking of Patrick Mahomes, Jay, I want you to – I want to ask you about this. Um, this is somebody who opened up at plus 700 to win MVP. He should never be plus 700 to win MVP, Patrick Mahomes. That's a general rule in life. Yeah, I mean, exactly. He's now the favorite to win MVP at plus 125. 
on mm. BetMGM. Is that still a bet you're taking? Is, should he be the favorite? He should be the favorite, and I still think there's value at plus 125. And so, not to get too inside baseball into it, but here's how I break it down. They're a 50-50 chance at the one seed. I think if they get the one seed, KC, then Mahomes is like a 90% chance to win MVP. And even if they don't, I still think he's like a 25% chance just because he's on pace for like the passing yards record and 50 touchdowns. He's going to flirt with those numbers. So... To me, if you add that up, that makes Mahomes minus 140 for MVP. So I think he should be the clear favorite. He's ahead of the field. Also like the Chiefs at plus 450 to win the Super Bowl. Lawrence, just head to head right now. Who do you like more for the Super Bowl, Bills or Chiefs? Chiefs. Yeah? Definitely Chiefs. Yeah, you're yeah. out on the Bills. Yeah, Pat, well, nah, just Patrick Mahomes is that guy, always been that guy. Yeah. yeah. I still kind of leaning the Bills. I want to see what happens this week. The Chiefs are, the Chiefs are playing great, but I do feel like everyone's just – so many fluky things had to happen for the Vikings to win that game. You know what I mean? Bills, including including yeah. Justin Jefferson coming up with the catch of the century. If he doesn't yeah. if he doesn't make that catch on fourth and eighteen, you know, the game's over. Yep. I think as well with the Bills, people are forgetting like they're really banged up on defense so right banged now, up. particularly in the secondary. Let's see when those guys come back, if they're right. still blowing games at that point. And also Josh Allen is throwing the ball up for grabs every week, yes, which is same. kind of a part of his game. He does have that gun slingery aspect right. to his game but he's not going to be throwing two picks every he, week so he didn't practice all week yeah he didn't practice all week and so as as the arm gets healthier as well i look it's right there it's the bills chiefs once again but yeah i mean i'm still i'm not i'm not abandoning my buffalo brethren just <laughs> yet for your brethren you they claim are. them i i went there i went there too. i went I'd there had i had, my I had wings i was a man of the people you saw when we went to the bar you know, yeah. people love me in Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo is my place. People love people. me in Buffalo. All go right, for listen, Amari Cooper. it's closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can stay here. For Lawrence Jackson at Lord Don't Lose and Jay Croucher, I'm Matthew Berry. We will see you back here tomorrow. Rankings are up and they're free at rotoworld.com. Peace out. Thanks. I uh, Listen. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.